how do you differentiate between attention-seeking behavior and a genuine cry for help? It might be fairer to say there are three or more options rather than two. One, a genuine cry for help. Two, venting. Three, attention-seeking behavior. And a big deciding factor between number three and the others might be to whom the behavior is directed. Calling your friend who is working two jobs just to make rent and telling them your new car has a scratch on the fender is probably number three. It's important to point out some people do verbally process experiences and would prefer to have someone help them do that. Venting is okay. It's not wrong. But it can be inconvenient or disrespectful when it's done to someone who is not in the emotional, physical, mental space to handle, venting, timing and consistency. You can't always tell, but history is a good indicator. Is there a history of manipulation? Depression? Attention seeking is more likely in the first case, whereas the other could be a legitimate cry for help. I've met people in each category. What they do when help is offered. If they accept the help and work on fixing whatever the problem is it is a genuine cry for help. If they either do not accept the help or do not change anything to fix the problem but continue to bring it up it is attention-seeking behavior. I consider attention-seeking behavior to be a cry for help. Don't. Don't bother to differentiate. If something happens, try to help the person. If the same thing happens again, clearly, you can't give them the help they need. You can move on. Or you can advise them to seek out someone else who can asterisk help them. This person might be a mental health care professional. It might the person who they need to talk to directly about the problem. E.g. problems with work. Talk to boss. HR. Problem with so. Talk to them. It might be someone else altogether. It's not worth splitting hairs as to the source of the behavior. Either you can help them or you can't. And you need to move to the next step from there. Even attention seeking is a cry for help in itself. If someone is well adjusted and happy, why would they need attention? When I was 15 I used to hide in the school's bathroom and wait until somebody noticed because I needed attention so badly. Why? Because I felt alone and scared and like nobody cared. That was a cry for help through seeking attention. I did plenty of this stuff. If someone does something unusual just talk to them and help them. There is always a reason behind everything. With a genuine cry for help. The person is usually semi-embarrassed and hesitant. Attention-seeking behavior usually feels more like a performance they're putting on. Verbal caps lock is on. In practice, it's attention-seeking behavior if you don't care about the person. And a genuine cry for help if you do. I don't. By knowing the person, someone who is constantly seeking attention probably needs help. Treat both as a genuine cry for help and let them know you're there for them. If they just needed attention that's fine. It's not really a bad thing. Sometimes attention-seeking behavior is an early stage of genuinely crying for help. So catch it early and work on it with them. And if it is a genuine cry for help, you might have just saved someone's life by giving them attention. Op. You. Humpty Dumpty 11 is this a near cryptic cry for help? If anything is troubling you, you can tell us here and thousands of people will help you. Doesn't matter to me. Attention is a need. If you are seeking attention, I'll give you my attention. If attention is what's keeping you on this earth, I will give you every bit of attention I can give you. It's a non-issue to me. They are the same as far as I'm concerned. Some people need more attention than others. 
I will also add, I've never had anyone take advantage of this before. So that may change my opinion if someone did. But thus far I'll stand by it. I am a clinical therapist and I am not saying that I am right. But I say that those are the same thing. The difference is the degree of desperation. But both are genuine cries for help. We as human beings are extremely social. I tell people that social engagement is on par with food and water needs. Look at the effects of solitary confinement. We use isolation to torture people. Yes. You are right that people can do things for attention. But that is a genuine cry for help against isolation. It's very unfortunate that attention-seeking behavior gained such a negative association in our culture that we are searching for an excuse to dismiss the struggling person rather than offer them the help they need. I don't think there is a rule book. Everyone is different and if one set of rules is true for one person doesn't mean it's true for another. As far as kids go, I don't distinguish. If a child is doing things for attention, it's because they don't get enough attention otherwise. Many people tell you not to react when your kids are doing something for attention. But I use that as an indication to give even more attention. Giving them attention consistently seems to make them more stable. With adults, I try to do the same. But it's harder when they get angry and violent or lie for attention and I protect myself against those.